uh, when you come into to level four and all of that, you teach it, but I want to give an overview of the whole thing. So what are you teaching on now? It's the, the seven anointings. Okay. Uh, you know, I wanted to think a minute. In Genesis 126, it says, Man was created in the image of God and his likeness. And I want to, uh, the church can never go above what they are taught or what they see themselves as. I want you to think about that a minute. The Holy Spirit is poured out. He's, he's wanting to possess us in every phase of our being. Lead us, direct us, guide yeah. us, speak through us, show us what to do, when to do it, where to go, who to speak to and who not to speak to. And we have put such limitations on ourselves because of what we've been taught mm -hmm. or what was spoken to us as children mm -hmm. or school or all of these different influences that have come at us to damper and quench the anointing and the likeness of God is. We are as God is in this earth. We're in His image and after His likeness. Mm -hmm. And the image that we have, in fact, I posted, reposted, I thought it was kind of funny. It wasn't funny, it's sad, actually. Uh, on Facebook, you had a picture of John Wayne. And then, did you see it? Because you get some of my stuff. Some, and then you have a picture of this guy in his shorts and his bandana and his head up in a bun and, oh, yeah. and you know, the... And it says, something has gone drastically wrong since 1959 to today. Yeah. When you see the, the picture of mankind... Right. And that's what the enemy has done. What well, we've evolved to. We have evolved to because we have allowed the enemy to speak louder than the Word of God. Amen. You know, and we see, uh, you watch things on TV, everything you see is either uh -huh. uh, promoted by a pharmaceutical company or it's a disease that's getting ready to come out, has come out, going to come out, or something people are already fighting. And so we're taught to be sick, how to try to fight that. And then we're taught that the moral standards of God the things that God has said, mm -hmm. they're obsolete, they're no effect, they're no good, they're racist, they're hypocritical, you can't live that lifestyle. I hate the church, a lot of people in the church even believe that. I know it. And a we're going to see, believe that. I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a shaking like we've not seen before, and I believe that. Um, this is off topic. I won't mention any names, but I went to a neighborhood association meeting yesterday, and I won't tell you what neighborhood I live in. But there was one little lady there, and uh, I mean, the whole board of the meeting of the Neighborhood Association was against her, and I mean, they were just giving her fits. And I thought, my gosh, I hope she's got a strong uh, constitution, because they were just giving Why? her... Because uh, they didn't like... What well, I guess they, they said, you know, we've had peace on this board for years, and, and now for the last year, ever since so-and-so's been on the board, it's been nothing but chaos and the strife and division and and um, wow. all this kind oh, of stuff. Goodness. Oh, it was terrible. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> I really did. The, what she did? What she did? They wouldn't tell. They wouldn't say. No. They wouldn't say. But she's supposed to, she is a Christian, supposedly, and... You know, so I thought, well, it, it, this could be the beginning of persecution for Christians for standing for what's right and offending everybody because they speak their, their mind of what right. the truth is. Right. Or it could be some legitimate beef. I don't know. I didn't get involved in it. And they didn't say, and I didn't vote because I didn't know what was going on. But I thought, you know, the time is coming when we say we love Jesus and we're Christians <coughs> and we're not going to stand in agreement with any of this stuff, that right. this darkness that is going on. I mean, the enemy has perverted the image of God because he's perverted man. Man can't see himself as God, as the mm -hmm. authority. It tells us in Psalm um, 115 that he, he gave the earth to man. <laughs> well, you know, we're to be in authority. We're to rule and to reign as God's people in this earth. And yet we're, we can't in our own thinking think that we have that kind of ability or authority or power or anointing or anything else. Right. So there's got to be some a lot of of um, pulling up false teachings by the root and get those out of the church and the people of God that know the truth are going to have to start standing up and being what God's called us to be. But it tells us, you know, his, his, his image, his likeness is his personality. Mm -hmm. And if you have the personality of God, what is it? It's love, gentleness, goodness, mm -hmm. kindness, meekness, all the fruit of the Spirit. It's everything. So 
I want to encourage us, uh, this levels of anointing, there's seven different anointings and it's gradual and progressive. It goes up to the final, the finest, the final one is the consuming fire where God is a consuming fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we had a, a couple that walked that, Enoch and Elijah, that managed to, to go to heaven, you know, without dying first to go to that. But the first anointing that we have, and, and Katie's covered this, is called the new birth. And I'm just going to read this off to you because uh, she'll be giving scriptures as she's teaching it. And she did give us some scriptures on that one. But uh, where the Holy Spirit draws you, convicts you of your sin. And you know you have need of a God. You have need of a Savior because you mm-hmm. can't live this life free uh, to do your own thing and not feel guilt and shame and condemnation. So that's the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. That's the first, the first of the seven anointings. The second of the seven anointings is the infilling of the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus as Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay, You get a partial. Uh, the anointing of the Spirit comes on. You remember in John 20 when... Um, all the disciples of God had not been filled with the Holy Ghost at that time. They did all the works that Jesus commanded them to do without that anointing of the Holy Spirit. But as right. Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Right. That's when they became born again. Right. That's when they began to have that measure of the Spirit of God coming. So that's the second infilling, the second anointing of the Spirit of God. The third uh, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came and was on them as tongues of fire, right. and they spake in other tongues, and that 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 feeling can come and go, you know, the Holy Spirit resides within <coughs> you forever when you're born again. But there's a there's a mantle that can come on you, and you right. feel it if you know the Holy Spirit's telling you to go witness somebody or go to the hospital, go pray for them, lay hands on them, this kind of right. thing. There's an anointing that comes from that mantle of the Holy Spirit coming up on you where you feel that. And a lot of times it is tangible, feelable, where you you sense it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of these pastors that have healing ministries, you know, they'll feel some healing ministries. You know, they'll feel something in their hands or or they'll feel a fire come on their body or a heat or something like that. Well, that's that mantle and that anointing of of the baptism of that Holy Spirit that comes to do the works that Jesus wants done to perfect right. and to bring people into the things of God. Um, the, the church, because of fear, doubt, unbelief, and ignorance, has resisted this baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Right. That's why the church is divided. That's why we don't see the miracles, the signs, the wonders. That's why people are leaving the church uh, in droves right. because they're hungry for mm-hmm. the reality of God. They want to see the power of God manifest. God is a powerful God and God doesn't mess around. When God says something, that's the way it is and that's what's mm-hmm. going to happen. Me? When, when, I, when I, I got saved and was at Faith Tabernacle, uh, me and you was, uh, he was pretty young then, wasn't about 19 or something, but anyway, uh, but that was the big thing, man, is the Holy Ghost. Everyone wanted the Holy Spirit, the right. devil speaking in tongues. I mean, that mm-hmm. was the big thing then. And you know, like I said, anymore, it's just, you, you don't even hear people talk about it. No, because they, <clears throat> he brings conviction and he brings uh, a place of repentance in the church. I, you know, it's really sad to me because they've listened to the lie of the devil, you know, right. to kick the Holy Ghost out and we don't, we will we don't want to be made a fool of, and we don't want the Holy Ghost to do something strange that we don't know, and it makes us right. uncomfortable. People make people yeah. uncomfortable. Right. Pastor this morning was talking about. Um, he said, "You know," he said, "I've had four different parents bring their child to this office to be delivered from demons." Why? And uh, he said, "There's there's an attack on the young people, ten mm-hmm. years old, eight oh. years old, ten. 10 years old, 8 years old, 12 years old. He said, I've had four different ones now. He said, these kids are getting involved in darkness Mm -hmm. at an early age. And he said, we need to start teaching them and filling them with the Holy Ghost so they have the power to resist all the things that are going on in this uh, culture. Right. Because you know, look at all the look at all the musicians and the song ministries that are out there. They're just as demonic as they can be. Yeah. Right. These movies from Walt Disney, ninety nine percent of them are nothing but demonic movies. 
and people still feed on it and take their oh, yeah. kids yeah. to it, and they, you know, they oh, get yeah. co caught up in that. It's like this Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, her popularity and all that she does, and yet everything is is demonic. That whole that whole music industry of genre with her and the ones that are like that, what? it's demonic. And they're feeding these kids, and these kids are coming into worship. That Beyonce and Jay Z and all of that, and Madonna, all of that. That stuff that has gone on has been dark right. and wicked, and the kids are eating that up. Well, now they're paying a price for it. Right. And the parents won't monitor what the kids are watching. They won't mm -hmm. say no to their child. That's you know, the I mean, problem. Right there, I know. That's the main problem. And they won't try right. to get the child to see the difference between what's good and righteous and holy and that as to what is dark and evil and wicked. You know, mm -hmm. let me tell you what, what parents have become, instead of becoming being parents that God called them to be, they're trying to be friends. Right. And what they're doing is they're destroying the, the youth in America. Yeah, I believe that. And they have no respect for authority. Well, they, they have destroyed the youth in America. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to dinner one night last week with family members, and um, one of the young family members, young girl, uh, very sweet, um, and very worldly, but very sweet girl. And so we were having dinner, a bunch of us, and uh, started dropping the f bomb. And I, you know, I I was taught to uh, I was taught to respect my elders. Right. Well, about the third one. I finally said, you know what? You are such a precious, precious young person. You are sweet as you can be, but you need to clean up your mouth. Right. I'm telling you, that what, what these kids say today don't yeah. blush, they don't blink, they don't, I mean, no, absolutely no uh, remorse or shame or anything right. what comes out of their mouth. Right. No, they're and it's not. sad, and I'm telling you, if the church... So people are going to have to start standing up and taking a stand against this stuff. It offends them, I'm sure, but I, that's offensive to me. You know, yeah. to hear yeah. and have to sit and listen to people talk like that. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's just, but the stand has got to be made. But those first three anointings are this personal anointing that comes to cause us to mm -hmm. be what God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Have the boldness he wants us to have. Pray when he wants us to pray. Go lay hands on the sick when he wants us to lay hands on the right. sick. Mm -hmm. And be obedient to follow what the Spirit of the Lord is teaching us and telling us to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? So those are the, the first three. And that's the personal anointing that comes on us that we've got to have in order to walk this walk with victory. And um, Amen. be pleasing to the Lord in what we do. All right. The fourth anointing is for unity. And that's when the body of Christ comes together and is in unity of prayer. Have you ever been in a worship service where everybody in there is just worshiping God, mm -hmm. loving the Lord, and there's no schism, no division, there's no uh, <coughs> nothing except except God being worshipped <coughs> and loved on, and right. the presence is uh, so heavy, and the glory of right. God comes, mm -hmm. and you see that glory fall? Uh -huh. Oh, I tell you, that's the sweetest thing in the world. And that's what the psalm says, you know, how blessed is it for brothers to come together in unity. Right, right. And that's where that, uh, that corporate anointing that comes from that is when you see people slay in the spirit, nobody lays hands on them. Nobody mm -hmm. even touches them. You see demons coming out. They don't mm -hmm. even have to call them out. Right. You know, or the who is ever in charge of the meeting doesn't have to call them out or mm -hmm. do anything. It's just the presence is so heavy that it just... The devils can't stand to be in that presence. Right, right. right. And they come screaming and crying out. Yeah. I saw uh, Pastor Greg Locke in one of his services like that. And I'm telling you, it was amazing how people were just getting set free mm -hmm. all over the building. Right. And, and it was just God's grace and power and glory. Okay, that's the fourth one, the unity anointing. The fifth one is on the national level when a nation comes together. Okay. I want us to think about that. I want us to look at our nation. Okay, you can have, this is the national level, and think about this. You can have Eliah, Eliah, Eli, Eli the, the uh, priest, was anointed in the office of the priesthood. Right. Okay, we know that. But because his sons 
did evil and were never corrected. He never uh, admonished them. He never tried to uh, show them the right oh, way no. or hold them accountable for what they did. Right. He lost that anointing. The priesthood was still anointed, but mm. Eli, Eli wasn't anointed to be right. priest any longer. So it cost him his life and the life of his sons and the life of the fam- those family members. So in the national anointing, this, this nationwide anointing that's coming, I believe that Donald Trump was anointed as president of America. Right. He was God's anointed man to do that. Right. The economy was better. There wasn't any wars. Yeah. Uh, things were, you know, the wall was being built. Borders were more secure. So you can see when the anointing is on someone in the office, mm-hmm. it brings the blessings of God mm-hmm. that come in. And this, you know, this is what uh, the Lord is. If the church ever gets it together and comes in in solidarity with what God is doing, right. this America is going to be a blessed nation. Mm-hmm. But we have got to come to that place right. of repentance and prayer and intercession mm-hmm. and believing God for the anointed president to come back. Right. Think about when our founding fathers in the days when America was struggling for survival. And the men that came here from Europe to found America were brought here by God, led right. by God. Mm-hmm. They dedicated this nation to God. Right. Mm-hmm. And the warfare came. And they had to battle and war to make this nation great and right. keep it alive and prosperous. George Washington, what was it? They said they shot at him five or six times and never, no bullet ever hit him. Yeah. You know, they found the bullet holes in his coat and stuff, but it never harmed him. They called him, what did they call him? Um, they had a special name for him, and I, I can't remember. I read it in the books, uh, history books. I can't remember what it was, but it was like at the Phantom. He's, they can shoot at him, but they can't kill him. You know, because he was anointed of God for the position he was in for the salvation and the founding of America. Right. Okay. So when that that national anointing comes on a nation, and we need to pray it comes back on America right. Right. Uh, for the nation to be protected and to survive as a country, it's when the church. Do you notice how many leaders were around Donald Trump? Yeah. Spiritual leaders. How yeah. many ministers? How many teachers? Preachers? Mm-hmm. Laying hands on him, praying for him, uh, bolstering him up through the Spirit of God. Right. Right. That's what happens with the national anointing. You come in and the anointed one that God has put there is is protected by the prayers and the right. everything of the church and the saints, and your nation is blessed. Mm-hmm. That's what we want to see. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. righteousness exalts a nation. Right. And blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. So that's the fifth one. That's the national level. That comes now. We're we're getting into some end day time stuff here. We're getting into the place where uh, people think Jesus could come any time, and He may, you know. But until He comes, we have a job that we right. have to do, and we've got to be accountable. Uh, I'm gonna share the story with you, and then we'll take the next two. Um, remember the story of the four minute mile. You remember <coughs> there was a guy that set a record of running a mile in four minutes. Mm-hmm. And that record held for 80 years. Nobody could break that. And for 80 years, he he had that record because everybody thought it was impossible to break that record. Mm -hmm. Nobody could beat a four-minute mile. And then a guy, his name was Bannister. I don't know if it was Roger or somebody Bannister. He came in, and he ran, and he beat the four-minute mile record. His record was three minutes, 59.4 59.4 seconds. Six tenths of a second. Mm-hmm. He beat the four minute mile. After he beat the four minute mile, there's been over 14,000 people that have beat the four minute mile. Wow. You see what happens when you get something in your mind, you get your mind set on something yeah. that mm-hmm. you can't do it or it can't be done because nobody, you know, somebody, nobody's done it. Yeah. So right. this is the way it is. That's, all, that's wrong. Right. People have got to re- realize that with Christ we can do all things. Right. We, you know, we we have the ability to to lead. We have the ability to speak out. We have the ability right. to pray, and we have the ability to say we don't like this if this is something that's going on that we don't like. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I'm encouraging all the gals in our prayer meeting to call your congressmen and your senators and start telling them you want all of our tax money to be quit being spent 
over in Ukraine and to Hamas and right. to these other people that are evil. Right. You know, they just, like a blank check, they give everybody their dog money because everybody's got their hand in the pot and they're getting kickbacks. Right. Such a stench in the nostrils of God and yeah. it's got to stop. It's just got right. to stop. So, <clears throat> anyway, there's nothing you cannot do <clears throat> if you set your mind that you can do it. Right. And if you pray for boldness, God will give you boldness. Right. And cause you to speak up when you need to speak up. Can I... Yeah. Mention one thing I mentioned it before about the dog that came over my yard. Yeah. My yard. Yeah. And God stuck my finger up in the air and said, "You get back over that fence." And the dog turned around on its heel. This was a big, huge lab to yeah. get back over the fence. Yeah. That's the authority we have as believers right. of God, right. if we know it and if we have the boldness and the courage to do yeah. it. See, that's mm -hmm. good. That's what happens. Ellen, when Glenda sometimes get ready for me, I say. Ooh, that look, Meg. Oh. Oh, you know, she knows I love you. Oh, you're walking. Ooh, Meg. Just in case. I got my jacket. You, 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 have, you haven't had your walk today? No, you're, I'm you're, making, you're fixing to get it. You won't get dinner this evening. Yeah. That's if he makes it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. This will be a... Like a week of walking. <laughs> okay, the sixth anointing okay. is you're tasting the powers of the world to come. The system of what? You taste the power. You said system? Taste the power of taste the world the to come. I may have, but okay. taste the power of the world to come. Hebrew, in fact, let's, Hebrews 6. Let's, let's turn to that one because these, these last two are... You're really, you're really under the anointing of the Spirit when you walk in these last two. It have you the system anointing. Huh? Oh, I was telling Ella it was the system and all It's no. it's the thing of um Taste the power of the world to come. Taste the power of the world to come. Let me, Hebrews? Yeah, Hebrews six. Let me just read little this to you. Uh, Hebrews what? Six. Let's start. Well, I'm going to read verse one through six. It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. That's what we're all headed for. This maturity level that that's what perfection means. It means to be mature, to grow up. Let's go in into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward uh, faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who once were were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If we're walking by the realm of the Spirit, how many people are tested? I, I watch it on YouTube a lot of these near-death experiences or people that have had visions and revelations of God. The Lord is showing himself strong and he's showing himself by revelation to mm -hmm. his body. But it comes when people will put the time in the presence of God and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and commit their lives to, to bring a place of quiet time and peace with the Lord. So you can go, we can go as far, as deep as we want to in the things of God. It's just how, how much do we want? How much of God do we want? Right. How much of the things of God do we want to partake, uh, mm -hmm. participate in yep. and partake of? You know? What, what is our limitation? Where do we draw the line? Where do we want to walk? And that's what this is all about. Yep. It says, If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, sin they have crucified to themselves the Son of, of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So when you've tasted the things of, of God and the things of the heavenly realm of that, you've seen people, and, and I told you when we went to Billy Brim's meeting a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, there was this lady that had been transported or teleported. I don't know how many times she talked about it, what the Lord in the night hours during her sleep would take her and spiritually she would go into different parts of the world and she would administer to different situations and circumstances and things that were there. So, you know, that that kind of <coughs> walk is is available for people that have that strength and that boldness and right. they have that uh, sensitivity to the Spirit to know when God says, this is what I want you to do, follow me, or allow me to, to use you in this way, in that mm -hmm. way, right. and not put the hand up and say, no, I don't think I'm ready for that, or 
I don't think they want to do that, Lord. You know, if they get over the fear of their spirit leaving their body and going where God wants it to go mm -hmm. to minister to however God wants to minister. Mm -hmm. But that's that's that sixth anointing. That's that anointing that uh, is right next to the last anointing, which is the consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and uh, I think when that anointing comes, most of us will be caught up in the rapture. So those are the, the seven anointings of God, and they just gradually get deeper and deeper and greater and greater and more powerful. But it's in, when we can get a mindset that there is nothing that we cannot do. If Christ is before us, who could be against us? If he's called us, if he's ordained us, if he's chosen us, if he set us in place, then we need to have that, that knowledge and that assurance that he's going to do with us what he wants. And it's not us that does it, it's him that does it in us. And mm -hmm. our job is to yield. That's one of the things I have. You know, I, I fight this thing, is this me or is this God? Is this me or is this God? Is God telling me to do this or is this just me wanting to jump up and do it? You know? And so yeah. it's, it's that have, thing of, of that. setting and saying, okay, I belong to God. He bought me with the blood. So really, I belong to him. I'm not my own. Right. And if I belong to him, he's going to live through me. And if I yield, then he's going to do through me what he wants to do. Right. Say what mm -hmm. he wants to say. Mm -hmm. Take God where he wants to go. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a we're coming to a place in in our history, I think, of Christendom that things are going to come to the culmination, and the Lord is going to return, but He's coming after a church that is strong and vibrant and on fire for God, not some weak church that is afraid to speak up or a church that is compromised mm -hmm. so much that you can't tell the difference between the church and the world. So, You know, the, the Lord has been dealing with me about this scripture and it's the and it's, uh, it's most powerful scripture. It says, Jesus said, if you love your kids or your mom or your dad, your daughter, your son, anybody more than me, you're not worthy of me. Right. right. And you know, when you stop and think about that, what God's word says and what God's word requires, and then you gotta ask yourself, do I love God more than I love my family? Do I love God more than I love my mom and dad or my sons and daughters or my mm -hmm. brothers and sisters? And, and if you can't say that, you got something wrong with your salvation. You know what I think a lot of that is too, Mick, uh, is that we are afraid to trust God with our children mm -hmm. and the people we love because we think we know what's best, you know? Yeah. And yet God loves them a whole lot more than we do. Sure. Right. And it, it's that that element of trust and say, okay, I'm, I'm putting my kids in your hands, Father. They're yours. And you're going to have to do with, you know, you brought me through. You kept me safe. You delivered me from all this stuff. And you're going to do the same for my children. Because he right. loves my children more than I can love my right. children. And, you know, right. we, we uh, have a hard time with that sometimes. Right. But um, as somebody who has fought against that spirit of fear all my life until God really began to get, get me delivered from it and set me free, uh, I, it motivated everything I did. I mean, all, every thought I had, uh, every response to God I made was based on that spirit of fear. Wow. That, and that's torment. That's a hard place to be. But once you get free from that and you realize, you know, I can trust God. You know, God's good. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And His love is unfailing. And so, you know, it, it's, a, it's a walk. It's a journey. Wow. And we all have to get there. And we all have our own timeline that we're going to get there. But we will get there if we right. continue to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, the anointing that God is bringing. It's is, is just how, how much of God do you want and how much are you willing to right. let him have his way in our lives. So mm -hmm. so that's, that's the seven there, Patey Poo. And what was the seventh one? Seventh one is the consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Yeah. Right. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Design for Victory podcast. If you want to contact us, feel free to, to uh, in the comment section of the video, you can 
comment below, you know, anything that... Now, on the podcast platforms, there's only one chance, I've noticed. But other than that... Excuse me. So, I would encourage you to do... You can do that where you can go to www.kingdomadvance.family.blog K-I-N-G-D-O-M-A-D-V-A-N-C-E dot family dot blog Go to uh, hit... the menu and then hit or the primary menu and then hit the uh contact us or no about us excuse me about us link and once you are and that's going to take you to our about us page and once you do that at the very end it gives you all of the contact information we have not yet updated the um page you know the the number on there is not current so I thought I would let you know that um or you can go to www.stormministries s-t-o-r-m-a-d-v-a-n-c-e I'm sorry my mind's storm ministries s-t-o-r-m-m-i-n-i-s-t-r-i-e-s dot com and then hit contact kingdom advancement dot or can kingdom advance dot family dot blog is our website K-I-N-G-D-O-M-A-D-V-A-N-C-E dot family dot blog. Um, actually, we partner with Pastor Mickey and Storm Ministries. Uh, we are both an arm of Preach Unto Them Jesus Church, um, which uh, senior pastor, uh, Pastor Judy is our senior pastor. So, um, Also, if you would like to get deliverance, you can... You can go to www.dwjd.org. Then uh, there's a click here link where it says if you'd like to get inner healing and deliverance, click here uh, from one of our ministers. Click here, and I'm I'm butchering that. Um, once you do that, the click here link is going to redirect you to a page which is going to have the four regions. Once you find out what region you are, on the bottom it'll have a button for that region. Tap that region. It's going to have a form, your name, email, message, phone number. Not in that order, though. And then it'll have a submit button, which you'll want to hit that once you've type, filled out all the form. And they'll get back to you within about 24 to 48 business hours. And um, another website is www.boblarson.org. And then you can hit the need help button. And another website is www.justind.com. And then the book new appointment button um, is there. So again, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And we look forward to hearing uh, about how this has helped you. You can also write to PUTJ, P-U-T-J, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma 73013. That's also on our page, but I thought I'd give you that. Put J, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma 73013. And feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. God bless.